trying to exit Vim. You know what I'm talking about. We've all been there and if you haven't, you will soon. It's like a rite of passage for everyone in tech. Vim is super powerful. It's available on most operating systems, Linux, Mac, and even Windows computers. From what I hear, I don't use it, so I don't know. Let me know in the comments below what you think. It also often opens by default, so you might not have a choice. You could configure it to override it to use a different editor, but why? The default is Vim. Let's get used to it. You don't have to use it for all your editing needs, but for basic commands, it's usually the go-to one to use. Therefore, it's the best that you learn the basics. Remember, you don't need to be an expert, but it's important to know how to navigate, search, and of course, exit. I wanna throw in some other bonus tips too. If you want to accelerate your career so you can get the job, clients, and money that you deserve, give this video a thumbs up, subscribe, and hit the bell button so you get notified each time I post a video and go live. Why Vim? It's super efficient, super lightweight, and there are so many plugins for it. It's been around forever. But let's cover what you need to survive using Vim. Let's create and open a test file. We would use Vim, and if a file already exists, it will open it. If it doesn't, it will then create it in memory, and then when you save it, it will write to disk. So in this case, we will just go test.tx because we're gonna create a test text file. Now we're in Vim. You might notice the numbers down the side. We'll get to that towards the end and how you can enable all these awesome features. It says new file at the bottom, but we can't type. We're not in edit mode. So to go into edit mode, we type I. And now you can see underneath at the bottom, it says insert. So now we can type hello world. That's what we always type always. And if you want to stop editing, you hit escape. So now we're no longer in edit mode. So if you want to add more text, we would hit I again. This is the second line. And you can navigate around using the cursor keys. But if I hit escape, and what happens if I don't want to hit I, so I edit where the cursor is, I want to edit into the next line, you can use O, which inserts another line after the line you're in and automatically goes into edit mode. If you want to delete a line, yes, you could go to the end and then you could press delete to go all the way to the beginning. But there's a much better way. You would hit escape to get out of editing mode and you would press D twice. And now you delete that line that your cursor was on. Let me make a mistake in this word. So let me say it's instead of is, it's ISA or is with an A at the end. If I want to delete the A, I could go into edit mode and then use the delete button. There is actually a better way where you can use X and delete one character to the right of your cursor. And what you'll notice when you press I, you edit where your cursor is. So for example, I've just done that now. And if I put another letter in, it puts it where the cursor was. If you want to edit after the cursor, you can actually use A where it jumps forward and goes into edit mode. So therefore I could put is back to ISA again. That's a terrible example. I need to come up with a better word but hopefully you get the idea. So we've talked about deleting an entire line. What happens if we want to copy and paste an entire line? Press Y twice to copy a line, also known as the yank command, and then you would press P to paste it, not in edit mode. So Y, Y, and then P, and it pastes it. If you were in edit mode, you would just see the letters Y, Y appear on the screen. So remember to use the escape button to get out of edit mode. What happens if you want to delete multiple lines or yank or copy and paste multiple lines? Well, you can just type a number before you type double D to delete a line or double Y to yank a line. So in this case, if I want to delete line two and three, I could type number two, DD, and both those lines go. So if I'm at the beginning of the line and I want to go towards the end, I could navigate all the way across, but that's quite a, it could take time, especially with a long line. So if you want to go to the end of a line and in edit mode, rather than navigating one character at a time, you could do capital A, go straight into the line, and we are, now in edit mode again. And if you want to go back to the beginning of the line, instead of navigating all the way back like this, you could just press zero and you go straight to the beginning of the line. Let me add some more text. And let me copy and paste it. And let me copy and paste all three lines. That'd be three Y Y P. There you go. Say I want to jump around between different lines and I knew the line number that I wanted to be on. I want to be on a, a line number like 100 and I want to navigate all the way down there. You can actually type colon and then the number and then hit enter, it'll take you straight to that line. In this case, I went straight to line five. What happens if you delete something and make a mistake? So if I delete line three, for example, 
double D, now it's gone, but I want to undo that, you can just press the U command and it will come back. If you notice at the bottom, it's always giving you the last change or last command that was run. What happens if actually you think, you know what, I want to redo that where you can use control R and it redoes it. I know you're all excited about searching. What happens if you want to search for something? And we'll do search and replace shortly. So let me add something else here at the end. This is new text. So what happens if we're at the top and I want to search for the word new within the file? Well, I would hit escape first, make sure I'm not in edit mode. Then I would type question mark and I would type the text that I wanted to search for, in this case, new. And then it would highlight it for me. And if you hit enter, the cursor goes directly to the beginning of that word or string. Okay, the most important command you're looking for is how to save and exit Vim. Or not save, but definitely exit. So hit escape, make sure you're not in edit mode. And then you would do colon. And this is the important part. You'd write W to write, and you could hit enter and it will save the file. You could also do colon WQ and it would write and immediately quit the file. So we're out. If I run the Vim command and open up the file again, if I made some changes that I didn't want to keep and I just wanted to quit the file, if I did it without the W and just the Q, so colon Q to quit, it would say, no, you can't do that. There are changes. So you can do colon Q exclamation mark. And now this is going to tell Vim that we want to quit. We know there are changes, but which we don't want to keep. And then you can leave it. And therefore, if we go back into the file, the A is no longer in front of Hello World because it didn't save the changes that I made previously. If you're still around, I know what you're thinking. My Vim doesn't look like this. I've got numbers down the side. I've got syntax highlighting. So there are other things you can enable in Vim, which makes it a little bit slower with large, large files. But you can do colon and you can do set number. My numbers are already set so that it won't just appear. It's already there. But that's what you can do with yours. But if you don't want to do that every time for every file with that configuration, other configuration, what you can do is you can go to your home directory and open the Vim RC file and you can actually set configuration in here. So every time you use Vim, it will load this config. If you want to see what config I'm using for my terminal for Vim, I do have my dot files that set up my environments on GitHub. I'll put a link in the description below. I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comments below what Vim commands you use and find useful or what commands you are always searching for. I know sometimes I forget and I do go search for these commands because it's not all the time that we use some of these certain commands.